you can't watch this documentary and just like not be like what the fuck surviving r kelly is a three-part which is really six-part docu-series on lifetime which i never thought i'd be watching lifetime considering how they keep remaking the exact same movie over and over again and woman meets man man turns out to be crazy man tries to kill woman woman kills man she drives off happily ever after the end you, you've seen one lifetime movie or element movie you've seen them all however the one thing i do think lifetime does excel in is docuseries when they're covering something that's traumatic or major and they want to give it some exposure see many people's argument against people who have decided to come out and criticize r kelly is you guys have known this information for years why are you just now coming out about it and i do agree to some extent but you have cases especially like me where i knew r kelly was this scumbag just for dating Aaliyah at 15 and i just didn't know the severity of it until i saw the documentary i didn't see or notice any of this stuff you know i was what seven years old i think when Aaliyah passed away and i knew a lot of her music you know i i still grew up with Aaliyah as one of my primary artists. The more I grew, the more the love for that art stayed with me and the lack of love for what I felt to be a predator like R. Kelly uh, became as well. As I grew up, I just kept thinking like, there's no fucking way this is some kind of mistake. How is a damn near 30 year old man married to a woman or a little girl half his age? I, I just can't fathom uh, an individual like this existing and for so long not having the 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 moral capacity to see that all that i did was fucking wrong and thinking that i can get away with it still this might be a huge reach to so many people but the more and more i think about the Aaliyah situation the more and more i feel like she would actually be alive if she had never met this guy i feel like if she was never in a position to be near a record label at that time to even get on that plane if she never met this dude i feel like she never would have been in that position in the first place and that may be extremely warped when i see shit like this happen i'm like you interfered with someone's life and the main and the primary focus for doing so was sexual gratification like that's it like i i'd, I'd have more respect for him if he just paid a fucking prostitute but you're intentionally going into these nooks and crannies these to these high schools to these little areas that you know young impressionable teenage girls are going to be at and why are you seeking out young impressionable teenage girls because you know they're easier to take advantage of because they're they're easier to groom into your why uh, your way of thinking that's why some of these relationships that were talked about on the docuseries lasted so long because you had their minds warped for so long i'm not putting the responsibility on a minor for being sexually taken advantage of. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. His brother, his older brother in prison, talking about how he has a preference to younger women. First of all, uh, a teenager is not a fucking woman. She's a girl, for one. That's like saying, I, I prefer being a pedophile or I prefer dating women my own age. Pedophilia should not be a preference. This cute little music teacher, you know the lady in the wheelchair? She knew what the fuck was going on too. She told him to leave the young girls alone. Did she ever report his behavior? Did she ever say anything to anyone? No. I'll be involving yourself. I'll be trying to help out. If I have to tell a grown man to stay away from young women, that acknowledges that he has some problem that I've refused to acknowledge. The fact that so many people probably knew about his behavior before any of this happened and knew what was going on while it was happening. The fact that, that the Sparkle's niece the fact that the family probably is telling her or herself saying that we can't come out and say anything. Let's just keep this in the family. Like it's a fucking bloodline trait or, or some type of fucking heirloom. These settlements that have been thrown under the rug. But then something else comes along and it's a it's a alleged sex tape with, with him and a 14 year old girl. And he went sicko mode. A lot of people ask this question. How is it that he's not already in jail based off everything that, we, that we've that we seen and heard. Unfortunately, everything that we've seen and heard is hearsay because there's no physical evidence linking R. Kelly to any of it. We then have the case of Lisa Van Allen, for instance. See, in the world of law, anything can be used to your advantage. And with Lisa Van Allen, that was no exception. Now, I know you've all watched the series and you're probably looking at her like she's telling a very compelling story, which I don't disagree with at all. 
Her only issue is the lack of transparency that she has in regards to explaining the full story that happened with her and R. Kelly. This is the exact same thing that was used against her in court when they tried to get this man prosecuted on that child pornography. She never said during the documentary that she stole R. Kelly's Rolex, which she did. She never admitted during the documentary that she tried to bribe the defense, which she did. She never said in a documentary how she had a relationship with two men that were committing bank fraud, which she did. Now, does this make her a shitty person that deserves to be in the ground? That's for you to decide, but I don't think that that matters. What does matter is when you bank all your money, you put all your investment into this one witness just for the defense to use her character against her in court. So this automatically not only ruins her credibility, but it damages the actual case here. It damages the amount of weight that you have against R. Kelly. So the jury's looking at her like, are we really supposed to believe this chick? You also have to remember at the time, R. Kelly was a superstar, but he was still unbeknownst to a lot of people, the jury included. So they didn't have any reason to suspect that this random guy is any different than any other random guy. Another thing that probably hurt her image and didn't make her look too great was the fact that she was aware at the time that this girl was significantly younger than she was at 16. If found out that that was a lie and the girl was actually 14, you still knew that she was younger than the legal age to consent. So all in all, people are looking at her like she's got these extreme character flaws and she's coming out accusing a man that we don't know has done anything of these heinous crimes. Again, I'm I'm just talking about the facts here okay i'm not talking about what i want or what i believe that's just why the case was dropped they showed the jury these images of r kelly with another woman that looks similar proving why the girl in the video wasn't who they thought she was meanwhile what was r kelly doing all this time releasing songs like ignition some of the best music of all time was released during this case so it's no wonder that during that time everyone was distracted by the music that he was releasing so much so that they probably weren't paying attention to the accusations i know eight-year-old me at the time wasn't i didn't know shit about r kelly's uh child pornography situation until i grew into my early teens knowing that he has this significant age not only mentally on these women but financially these young girls that he's scouting out sitting at fucking high schools going to settings that you know young people are going to be at in order to get them to fuck you that's so weird but by that point the public had already tarnished his reputation so whether he was found guilty or not which i'm sure matters to the family didn't seem to matter to the public because a lot of the public had already judged him and assumed that he'd done what he'd done the washington post uh, did an article on basically label complacency stating how many of these businesses were aware that r kelly was doing the things that he was doing and still overlooked it anyway at the possibility of making more money off the guy all this does is prove that times have changed because now that people are talking about it these labels and a lot of these public figures that probably had no issue with r kelly before are now coming out of the woodwork acting like they have a major issue with it when they've known all this time again you got a guy like me that wasn't aware of all the shit that was tied to the man I was just looking at him like, you're a scumbag for even marrying a 15 year old. I was done at Aaliyah. Now you got all this extra baggage? And it's unfortunate because a lot of your guys' misplaced anger can't go to record labels like Jive and Epic because the same people that were there allowing this shit to happen and, you know, uh, advocating for R. Kelly most likely aren't the same people there right now. These record labels and these groups aren't the only people that I feel were complacent. I look at Aaliyah's mother and she's going out after the documentary has been released trying to debunk the one woman statement the, the woman with the ponytail fresh ponytail by the way the one with the ponytail she's trying to debunk her story you never knew my daughter our we were our, her father and i were on tour with her at every step of the moment where the fuck were you when she got married to a 30 year old damn near are you trying to absolve yourself from looking like a piece of shit that badly that you want to just debunk that little bit that little part that's the one that you're worried about that you never knew my daughter. That's what you that's the only argument you're going to address out of the entire thing that you, that's what you had a problem with. Then we get to R Kelly's ex-wife, right? The real one this time, the one that he's using to shield all eyes from doing what he's doing in the background because there is just no fucking way in hell I believe that a woman that was aware of the headline in the year 2003 and that knew R. Kelly was facing these issues with child pornography in 03, didn't know about anything 
until 2000 like you divorced him in 2009 and i'm not victim blaming here i'm sure she was a victim of abuse just like the rest of them were if that happened but just just hear me out you don't think it was more likely than not that r kelly is using this the marriage to this woman as a cover-up to do what he wants to do on the side you don't think that's a possibility you don't think at some point he was saying okay you know i'm gonna I'm a fuck around with you but in general you're you're gonna be my shield to do what i want to do on the side how you don't know that all this is going on from 2003 because that's the moment where i feel she would have become the most aware of it from 03 to 09 you saw nothing nothing at all keep in mind they'd been married for 15 years and already hadn't seen nothing all this time which again i just i find to be extremely hard to believe just something isn't right about all of it i know another argument people are going to use is well i'm still going to enjoy his music i'm still going to separate the art from the artist and i've seen this argument used so many times and you guys have to understand that in all situations this logic cannot be applied the thing the very thing that you're using to influence the decisions of the people that you're affecting with your bullshit is your art you're utilizing the thing that people know and love you for the thing that people are supposed to consume for their own entertainment and their own amusement you're using it to fuck these little girls that's what you're doing that that within itself for r kelly eliminates the conversation of separating him from his art because that's the very essence of what he's using in order to use these young women that's the very that's the exact thing that he did you're at that stage and you're utilizing the thing that people know and love you for your influence in order to influence these decisions of these young women because you see many of them on there say oh i didn't want to say no because basically his influence they didn't want to make him angry. They didn't want to be like, oh, I don't want him to not like me. So I won't separate the art from the artist in that case. I will never stream an R. Kelly song again in my life. And people will say, oh man, you're overreacting. It's just music. I can listen to it and not think about the artist. In this case, his, his music is just tainted now because this is the thing that he's using to do what he was doing. That doesn't not make him a talented singer. That doesn't mean that he didn't have a gift, but he used that gift for the most perverse things that you could do in doing this process in such a diabolical way in such a planned format i'm gonna i'm gonna utilize the influence i'm gonna use these things that people know and love me for to get close to them to introduce myself to them to make them feel safe at that point i'm then going to reel them in i'm gonna make them feel like i have something for them i'm gonna make it feel like i have something to offer them i'm gonna make them feel like i have a plan for them but again these are tactics that you can only try with an unseasoned young girl okay one that doesn't know much about the world and doesn't know much about how people use mental gymnastics in order to play with them to get them to do what they want. I'm then going to make these little girls feel responsible for pleasing me sexually. Like it's something that they're supposed to do. It's something I have a right to. At that point, I want to own them. I want to keep them as my own possessions. I don't want them talking to anybody else. I don't want them doing anything else. They can't communicate with their parents, can't communicate with their family, with their friends. They are mine and I own them. I now have control and dominate this young individual you did more than statutory rape you did more than have sex with a girl that was underage it's way more than that you taught her to believe that you were her resource or like or like you were her reason for living you taught them to believe that your needs came before their own and at any inconvenience to themselves you had a team of people around you willing to protect and serve at any point in your career knowing you were doing the perverse shit that you were doing now we find it not so hard to believe that it was possible that these young girls that came out a year or two ago talking about that they were being held captive uh, we don't find it too hard to believe now when we hear these other stories where r kelly is taking these girls and putting them into different rooms and preventing them from talking to their family and uh, making them go through a call process as if they're calling a fucking secretary's office just to talk to their mom now you see why this is now such a huge possibility and how this probably happened then after all that you see the argument that people are making that black girls might not matter and in this case i can see why that would be made a possibility only in the sense that there was never anything done and this all seemed to be public information since its release like no reporter no publication no record company no artist said this is happening at an alarming rate let's get this under wraps 
At the same time though, a lot of people that were supporting R. Kelly were who? Black women. And the shit that's really nuts, it's how damn near every black person in America went crazy with the Rodney King situation, with Trayvon Martin, with Mike Brown. But the second someone isn't found dead, the second it's done from a black person, where is the riot for R. Kelly? Where is the get him the fuck out of here movement? I'ma need for it to be more than just a, a fucking a movie network that regurgitates the same movie over and over again. All this R. Kelly shit showed me in watching it, which furthered my anger towards all of his victims, was that people can look at you, do what you do, and ignore it as long as it doesn't affect them directly. This entire situation spells complacence. That's all it does. And this isn't me trying to push on a Black Lives Matter movement because that doesn't get shit done. It's just me saying that I find this would be a really hard thing to believe if a large portion of the women affected by what R. Kelly did were also of Caucasian descent. Okay, look at Bill Cosby. These are not too far off in situations and R. Kelly still hasn't even been given any fucking papers yet. R. Kelly is a piece of shit child molester hiding under the guise of an R&B legend since his start in order to support his sick fucking tactics and he's still doing it fuck R Kelly fuck his songs fuck his money cuz if he wasn't who he was this dude would be 6 feet under as we speak see y'all next time and I'm out